In order to tame climate change, what does it take? At least it would be nice with some kind of global agreement. Someone who is very, very busy preparing the Copenhagen summit just six months away from here in December. Someone who is very, very busy but took her time to be with us here is Danish, the Danish Minister of Climate and Energy, Miss Connie Hedegaard. But the first sort of psychological necessity would be that people start to realize that time is getting short. Uh, this Sunday, there will only be six months left until we meet in Copenhagen. And as I basically think this is the most complicated piece of international negotiations right now, one should not be mistaken. We cannot solve all the issues in Copenhagen because each government will have to prepare its position. And right now it is as if people are still sitting, waiting for someone else to take the next step. And we must sort of break that. And to break that, we could sort of have the in developed countries, they must come forward with ambitious reduction targets. It is encouraging to see what is happening right now in the United States. Later this month, I take it that Japan will come forward with a midterm target. Uh, Australia recently sharpened its target. EU has come forward with 20% cut going to 30, provided others deliver something. So in that sense, things are progressing. But, but we also need the developing countries, the de emerging economies, to come up with their contributions. And the third crunch issue will be financing, because if nobody is going to pay for an agreement, we will get no agreement. What would be uh, a minimum for success in Copenhagen, would you say? Well, basically, I think that we should stick to what science tells us is necessary. And science tells us that we have to take care that we can make it likely that the world stabilized under two degrees average temperature increase. Why is that important? Because science also says, if you don't manage to do that, yeah. then there are some forces that will sort of be left there so that things will accelerate and then, basically, in the end, our whole lifestyle will be at risk. Because the longer we postpone action, the more dramatic the consequences and the more costly it's going to be, both economically and for business, but also for society. Because the longer we postpone action, the more drastic political initiatives will have to be taken. So I think that we should not postpone action from Copenhagen. It's just like a child in school, you know, when you have an exercise, and uh, the deadline is coming close, you feel this is sort of, it would be very nice if you could postpone the deadline a bit. Mm -hmm. But it's, the exercise is not going away. And I think that we should be aware that the deadline set for Copenhagen this December is not set by Denmark. It's set by 192 countries back in Bali in December of 2007. And we should really stick to that deadline. If we miss this window of opportunity, then I don't know when we'll get another chance. Uh, I'm Connie Hedegaard, Danish Minister of Climate and Energy, which means that I'm pretty busy trying to sort of make the foundation for making it possible to conclude an ambitious global deal in Copenhagen uh, later this year. And uh, I'm here to try also to urge the business community, the international business community, to go back to their governments, tell the governments this is doable, it is possible, it can pay off at the bottom line also in business if we really address the climate issue, energy efficiency, things like that. And then also to make them understand that we need them to come forward with their innovative ideas. It's not enough just to come up with sort of a wishing list as if it was for birthday or Christmas to say, oh, it would be nice if the politicians solved all the problems. Because we can make the international framework, but in the end, it will have to be business. It will have to be the market that has to come up with new solutions, innovative technologies, new ways of doing things so that we can provide the growth for the nine billion people we are going to live at planet Earth in 2050.